Chapter 151, Imperial Decree Yu Hang saw a golden flash out of the corner of his eyes. He looked closely and realized that it was the little yellow kitten that his youngest sister raised. When did this fellow come along? Would it trample on the melon seedlings while running around so recklessly? But, after a careful look, he saw that the little kitten very cleverly chose to run on the ridges on the fields and didn't touch any of the vines and seedlings at all. Ladle after ladle of water with a faint hint mystic stone water was watered into the melon fields. The watermelon seedlings stretched its leaves in the breeze, as if it was trying its best to grow. The tiny melons seemed to have quietly grew a little when no one was looking. They finished watering the three plots of melons fields when it was almost noon. The siblings carried the empty buckets and walked back to their house. When they reached the foot of the West Mountains, they noticed that the normally deserted Zhao residence was surrounded by many villagers. Uncle Zhao's family lived far away from the village so they rarely interacted with the villagers. His house had always been very peaceful and quiet, but today, did something happen? Xia Kao and her older brother looked at each other and quickly ran to the Zhao residence. When they arrived at the stone wall of the Zhao residence, they could hear the surrounding villagers discussing excitedly, Wow! Did you see? That's an imperial decree. It's the imperial decree mentioned in the opera. Unfortunately, it's too far away to see what the imperial decree really looks like. I never expected that old Zhao was a great general of the former dynasty. Do you know about the official who often comes to his house these days? That's his disciple. He's a high-ranking official of the imperial court. Didn't you hear what the imperial decree said? The emperor cherishes and values talent, so he wants old Zhao to go back to be an official. What was the title conferred on him again? I can't remember. Zhang general. 1. He's bestowed the title of a great general. Tsitsi, Hunter Zhao's family is going to be amazing in the future. Isn't that right? The Zhao family is going to enjoy a happy life in the capital now. The person who announced the imperial decree doesn't have a beard. Is he that Jin mentioned in the opera? SHHH. Are you looking for death? Those eunuchs hate being called Jin, too, the most. If he heard you. You will be beheaded. Yuxia Kao felt completely relieved after she heard that. Things were finally working out for Grandpa Zhao. Before, when she visited the Zhao family, she often inadvertently saw Grandpa Zhao staring into the distance with a lost expression. One with civil and military talents shall serve the imperial family. It seemed like Grandpa Zhao was unwilling to live such a dull life despite living in seclusion for 30 years. Fortunately, the current emperor was wise sovereign who appointed people based on their merits. In the future, grandpas and his family should be able to shine and thrive in their own positions. Hey, that little girl, stand right there. Just as Yuxia Kao wanted to turn around and leave, a loud voice stopped her from behind. Yuxia Kao looked around and realized that she was the only little girl around. Are they calling me? Who is it? Yes, you. The sound of footsteps came from behind and quickly arrived in front of her, a healthy and hearty looking old man, who had a white beard and a fair and chubby face, looked at her warmly with a smile. Fifth, Fifth Lord. Yuxia Kao recognized him. He was dressed in clothing made of coarse cloth. Seeing his simple attire, she asked curiously, Why are you here? Because I want to. With his hands clasped behind his back. The Emperor Emeritus looked around and saw verdant greenery everywhere. Even the air seemed fresher. He smiled and said, This is a good place to live out one's life in retirement. With imaginary black lines on her head, Yuxia Kao thought, You must be too idle. You're choosing to wear patched clothing made of coarse cloth instead of silks and brocades. You're not living like a member of the Imperial family. But instead you're wandering around in a barren and poor area. How in the world did you determine that this remote village was a good place to enjoy one's life in retirement? You didn't come with the imperial envoy who came to announce the imperial decree, right? Seeing that he came over from the Zhao residence, Yuxia Kao suddenly had this thought and asked. The Emperor Emeritus laughed and seemed to be in a good mood. I heard. I heard that head steward Jiang needs to go to Dongshan village to announce the imperial decree. Considering that we were going the same way and it was a good idea to look after one another on the way, we just came together. Going the same way? What did you come to Dongshan village for? 
Yuxia Cow was holding the little golden kitten and gently stroking its fur. With an even bigger smile on his face, the Emperor Emeritus narrowed his eyes and looked at her, making her feel uncomfortable. Then he said, Of course, I came to find you are. Find me? Why was he looking for her? Was it because he thought that it was a waste of money to spend 300 tls to buy her braised food recipe and wanted to get a refund? But then again, this fifth lord wasn't a businessman, nor did he plan on selling anything. So, spending 300 tls to satisfy his cravings was indeed somewhat wasteful. The Emperor Emeritus pretended to be mysterious as he smiled at her. He waved his hands at her and said, Come, let's talk as we go. After saying that, he walked towards the direction of Xiaokao's house. Well, it seemed like he really made preparations before coming. He even knew her address. However, she didn't have that much cash at home. She had asked third young master Zu to help her invest all the money that she earned from selling the recipe, as well as subsequent earnings, into the stores at the harbor. The Emperor Emeritus walked slowly in the front, while Xiaokao followed him step by step like a little minion. Yu Hang and the Emperor Emeritus's attendants were behind them. As soon as Yu Hai went out, he saw a group of people headed this way. He looked carefully and realized that his younger daughter was amongst the crowd. Xia Kao what is this? Oh, isn't this fifth lord? Why has the elder come to visit? Yu Hai had also recognized the old man who walked in front and hastily went forward to greet him. The Emperor Emeritus pulled a long face and said with an irritated tone, is this lord that old? Little you are, if an honest person doesn't know how to speak, he will offend a lot of people. This lord is very angry. What do you think you should do? Yu Hai knew that the person in front of him had an extraordinary background. If he accidentally offended him, who knew what he would do to powerless commoners like them? Even if that person just wriggled his binky, the results probably wasn't something that he could withstand. Thus, for a moment, Yu Hai just stood there helplessly and didn't know what he should say. Fifth Lord don't bully my father, who's an honest man. Tell me, what do you want to eat? As long as we can afford the ingredients, I'll definitely make it for you. But, first of all, I only know how to cook homemade dishes so don't ask me to make stuff like Fo Tiao Kiang, 3, and Bao Shen Kai Du, 4. I'm just an ignorant little peasant girl, so I don't know how to make them. Yuxia Kao felt that she still had some ability to handle a glutton. Sure enough, her rude words didn't provoke the distinguished guest from the capital, Fifth Lord. Instead, he guffawed and said, I really like this little girl, Xia Kao. Then I, Fifth Lord, won't be courteous anymore. I want to eat pig head meat. I also want spicy pig intestines, shredded pig tripe in chili oil. Duck blood soup with vermicelli. The Emperor Emeritus didn't have any reservations and ordered many dishes, which all fitted into the homemade food category that Xia Kao mentioned. But the last dish, duck blood soup with vermicelli, was somewhat difficult for Xia Kao to make. Fifth Lord, it's easy to get duck blood, but where am I going to get vermicelli? Is it alright to change it to duck blood and tofu stew? At this time, Yuxia Kao had already confirmed Fifth Lord's identity. He was in his fifties and had a lofty and hale figure. At first glance, it was obvious that he had served in the military before. Moreover, he could wear bright yellow, which symbolized the imperial family. Most importantly, he knew the dish, duck blood soup with vermicelli. Fifth Lord was the founding emperor of the Great Ming Dynasty and the current Emperor Emeritus. A. The Great Ming Dynasty was seriously too small. Two transmigrators had actually met just like this. But, she wasn't sure whether the Emperor Emeritus knew about her origin. Would she be able to fool him? Yuxia Kao feigned a distressed expression and muttered, Fifth Lord, all the other dishes are easy to make. But this duck blood soup with vermicelli what is a vermicelli? Where can I buy it? Don't act dumb and try to gloss over it. You, this little lass are still too young to scheme against me. Even if others don't know what a vermicelli is, can you not know? I don't care. I'm definitely going to eat the duck blood soup with vermicelli. 
the Emperor Emeritus strode into the family's courtyard in an imposing manner, and then sat candidly on the recliner in front of the house. It seemed like she couldn't avoid it. Seeing that the Emperor Emeritus didn't intend to perform the scene of fellows from the same hometown meeting each other, Yuxia Khan naturally wouldn't mention it either. She furrowed her little face and said, Fifth Lord, I only know that vermicelli is made with sweet potato flour, but I have never made it before. I don't know how to make it huh? The Emperor Emeritus swayed leisurely in the recliner with his eyes narrowed, yet he didn't overlook nor spare her as he said, Stop pretending. You know how to make roasted chicken and osmond the stuck, but you don't know how to make vermicelli? Who are you kidding? If you keep wasting time. I'm going to punish your father with the crime of disrespect and send him to prison. Humphrey Xiaokao felt really helpless when facing the Emperor Emeritus, who was like an unreasonable old urchin. After looking at her startled father and confused mother, she summoned her courage and said, Fifth Lord, please don't frighten honest people like us. My parents are timid and get easily scared. After a pause, she said, I reckon you won't be able to eat the vermicelli today. The process of making vermicelli is too complicated, so it's impossible to make right now. Also, pig head meat, intestines, and tripe were all taken to the docks to be sold. If you want to eat them, you'll have to wait until the evening. All right. I, Fifth Lord, am not an unreasonable person either. Let's just have a casual lunch, and I will wait to eat the big feast in the evening. The Emperor Emeritus crossed his legs comfortably on the recliner, and then suddenly said, Why didn't you make a rocking chair? It's so comfortable to rock in a rocking chair while basking in the warm sun. A big feast tonight? The Emperor Emeritus wasn't going back to town tonight. How could Dongshan village possibly accommodate this great Buddha? Yuxiakao looked towards the lead Imperial Guard, who was beside the Emperor Emeritus. Shouldn't you guys dissuade him? The lead Imperial Guard pretended not to seek Siakao's gaze and stood close behind the Emperor Emeritus with an icy expression on his face. In fact, he was actually having a mental breakdown inside, if he could choose. He would rather have his master obediently stay in the capital. That was the safest place within the entire Great Ming Dynasty. But his master liked to run around. There were still supporters of the former dynasty remaining so it was really dangerous outside Ah, yet he wanted to spend a night at this little mountain village, his master must think that he was still idle and wanted to give him some problems to solve, unfortunately, head steward Liu had stayed in the capital, if he was here, he might be able to persuade him, as a for them, the imperial guards, they could only stand to the side, Yuxia Kao hid in the kitchen with a miserable expression, Madame Liu pulled on her hand and asked about the identities of the people in the yard in a low voice, Xia Kao was afraid of scaring her parents and didn't dare to reveal Fifth Lord's true identity, she just said that he was an esteemed guest from the capital, who even the county magistrate had to be polite to, 1, Zengo General, Komungo equals defender of the nation, 2, Tjian, Comma also means eunuch, but it has a negative connotation, so people usually refer to them as Gong Gong, comma which sounds more polite. 3. Fotiakian, comma literally Buddha jumps over the wall, a stew that consists of numerous ingredients like chicken, duck, abalones, scallops and more prepared in a huge jar and usually requires 1-2 days to prepare. 4. Baoshan Kaidu, comma a thick soup of abalone, sea cucumber shark fin, and fish more, which is also literally what it's called, chapter 152, old memories, from Madame Liu's perspective, the county magistrate was the highest ranked official in Tangatown, if the magistrate had to treat this man so politely, then he was definitely very high up the ladder, she needed to be more careful around him, there was a finite amount of resources at home, for the most part, they only had vegetables that were growing in the field, they only had one type of meat at home and that was the portion of streaky pork that they had bought yesterday. Yuxia Kao sliced off a portion of the streaky pork and chopped it up finely until it was finely minced. She then sliced some eggplants into discs and dipped them in egg and flour before she fried them into eggplant fritters. She had a hunch that the Emperor Emeritus liked strongly flavored food, so he would likely enjoy these fragrant and flaky eggplant fritters. As for the leftover pork, she used it to make the fatty but not greasy, full of delectable flavor, 
twice cooked pork. She took string beans that had just been picked from the garden and dry fried them with a bit of lard to make delicious dry fried string beans. To the tomatoes, she added several chicken eggs to make a plate of stir fried tomatoes and eggs. Thus, she managed to put together four hot dishes for the meal. For the two cold appetizers, she used cucumbers and peanuts that had been cooked in boiling water. However, with only two cold plates on the table, she thought that it wasn't very presentable. After thinking a bit, Xia Kang took out five of the five spice duck eggs from the marinating jar and boiled them until they were cooked. Then, she sliced them and placed them onto a plate. The marinated duck eggs were full flavor and quite tasty. The egg yolks were bright yellow in color and small drops of glistening yolk oil oozed out. When eaten, they had a mildly salty taste that was very fragrant. Xia Kao calculated the time quickly and decided that the century eggs should be about done by now. She picked out one of the eggs that had been coated in the mud mixture and lightly pinched off the top of its mud shell. The egg shell which had been gently cracked open, peeled off, revealing a glossy dark exterior. On the surface, there were white-colored, delicate designs, which showed the egg's signature pine flower appearance. She lightly sniffed the egg and a special and exotic smell hit her nose. Xiaokao asked Xiolian, who had just returned home, to ride their donkey to the neighboring village and buy some soft tofu. Century eggs with tofu was a simple dish that tasted delicious. This dish had a soft texture, delicate flavor, and melted in the mouth, because they were entertaining high-ranked guests. She especially prepared a more highbrow dish. She first cut the soft tofu into small rectangular blocks and had Madame Liu to hollow out the blocks. Then, she finally minced the century eggs and mixed in aromatic vinegar sesame oil, and other seasonings. Next, she stuffed the century egg mixture into the hollowed out tofu pieces and sprinkled some finely chopped green and red chili pepper on top. The finished dish not only looked appetizing but also had a savory taste and smell. Daughter, your godfather is home. What did you make that smells so delicious? I can smell it from far away needless to say, in the past month. General Fang's eyes and often returned from the docks to bum a meal off of the Yu family. His loud and clear voice could frequently be heard well before he stepped into the family's courtyard. This time, the resonant sound of his voice sounded like it had suddenly been cut off and screeched to a stop. At this moment, Fang's eyes and eyes were opened wider than a bronze gong and were full of disbelief. He forcefully rubbed at his eyes but the great and honorable person in front of him was still in the courtyard. This lowly official kowtows in greeting Fang's eyes and went three steps forward and knelt in front of the Emperor Emeritus. It was as if a gold mountain had met a jade pillar. Just as he was about to complete his greeting to the Emperor Emeritus, he was interrupted. The Emperor Emeritus used a hand to wave at him in dismissal. Ming Zar, we're not at the capital, so no need to be so serious. Come, sit here and spend some time with Fifth Lord. Ming's was Fang Zizan's courtesy name. Imp Fifth Lord, why are you at Dongshan Village? Did you hear that my master lives here? That can't be right ah. If that was true, then you should be at my master's home, so why are you at Brother Yu's residence? Fang's eyes and cautiously sat down on the small wooden stool next to the Emperor Emeritus and placed his hands on his knees. He resembled an elementary school student who was receiving lessons from his teacher. Yu Hai was in the middle of the vegetable field in the courtyard, turning over the soil. When he saw a lofty third rank official kowtowing to Fifth Lord, he knew that this Fifth Lord had an uncanny background. He was trying to guess just how exalted Fifth Lord was as he worked. However, since Fifth Lord apparently didn't have any ill will towards the Yu family at the moment, that was considered a huge blessing. Eh, Godfather, weren't you at Grandpa Zhao's place helping them take care of the matters relating to the Imperial Edict? How do you have time to come over here? Yu Xiaokao came out of the kitchen to take a peek outside and smiled brightly at the men in the courtyard. Her luminous and pale little face had somehow gotten coated with some flour unbeknownst to her. Instead of looking sloppy, it actually made her look even more adorable and charming. In front of his sweet and cute adopted daughter, the expression on Fang Zizan's face became so soft that it looked like one could squeeze some water out of him. His smile became gentle and his voice also softened. Good girl, the eunuch who bequeathed the imperial decree is going to eat a meal over there. 
so I came over to pick some fresh vegetables for them. What? The eunuch issuing the imperial decree is staying with the Zhao family to have a meal, who gave him the right. The emperor emeritus erased the amiable smile on his face and the sound of his voice seemed a bit more dignified and imposing. Fang Zizan smiled carefully and said, Fifth Fifth Lord. It's noon and there's not any place to eat in the vicinity of Dongshan village. Should the eunuch return back on an empty stomach, don't blame eunuch Jiang. The emperor emeritus frowned fiercely and replied, Dongshan village is only about a two hours horse ride from town. It's not like Jiang Quain doesn't know the customs and rules. Is he not afraid of being accused of the crime of trying to get too close to officials? A fifth lord. It shouldn't be this serious right? There's no one else in Dongshan village, so there likely wouldn't be anyone gossiping about this. Fang Zizan felt beads of sweat form on his forehead. Are you me that as long as other people don't see it's okay for him to privately become friends with court officials? The Emperor Emeritus scowled deeply and commanded the Imperial Guard next to him, Little Zwang. Go get Jiang Quain for me. Tell him that I'm having a meal here and I need someone to serve me. Understood. The Imperial Bodyguard, Zhuang Mo, received the command and swiftly left. The courtyard quickly became tranquil again, but the atmosphere was somewhat awkward now. Yu Hai had long gone out of the courtyard and started working on the ground in front of the gate. He was afraid that he might hear something that he shouldn't. Time to eat. Yuxia Kao's bright and clear voice shattered the dead silence in the courtyard. Fang Zizan suddenly felt that there was nothing more pleasing to his ears than his adopted daughter shouting time to eat. At the top of her lungs, the frown on the Emperor Emeritus's face momentarily disappeared, and he sniffed, chicken stewed with mushrooms. This dish is quite good, I like it. Fifth Lord, do you want to eat in the room or in the courtyard? Yuxia Kai inquired. The Emperor Emeritus glanced at the family's tottering, mud brick house and curled his lip. The rooms are a bit stuffy and the courtyard is so bright and spacious. Let's eat in the courtyard then. When Yu Hang heard the old man voice his opinion, he quickly moved the family's new dining table out into the courtyard and took out all of the stools in the house. He looked at the large men next to Fifth Lord, hesitated for a moment, and then asked Xia Kao quietly. It looks like we don't have enough wooden stools for everyone. Should I go to Auntie Zeus and borrow some from her? Although the Emperor Emeritus was no longer young, his hearing was still as keen as before. He laughed. You don't need to go through that much trouble. These men won't be eating with us at the same table. Mings, earlier the little girl called you her godfather. You're quite fortunate. Previously I had wanted to adopt this lass as an honorary granddaughter but I had been summarily rejected by her. Fang's eyes and grinned widely and laughed a couple of times before he suddenly recalled something. The smile vanished on his face as he said, Fifth Lord. Don't blame her. Xiaokao is still young and is sometimes childish. Please excuse her ignorance. This servant, Jiang Quain, greets a shrill and resounding voice echoed in the air. As a eunuch who was ranked highly enough to issue an imperial decree, Jiang Quain still knelt obediently on the ground as his body lightly trembled. All right. The Emperor Emeritus shouted violently and stopped the eunuch from finishing his sentence. Why do you look so confused? Why aren't you coming over now to serve? Are you blind and losing energy? Well, you Fushing must have been blind to take such an idiot like you as his adopted son. Jiang Quain had already discreetly asked the Imperial Bodyguard, who had given him the message, about the Emperor Emeritus's mood. At the time, his whole body had suddenly been drenched in cold sweat. A court eunuch becoming friends with a court official was a serious crime that could lead to beheading. He could only blame himself. Previously, the emperor had repeatedly warned him to treat General Zhao with respect. He had gotten too proud and almost unexpectedly committed an overwhelming offense. Ah, fortunately, the emperor emeritus had called him over. The emperor emeritus was truly like his second father and benefactor who had saved his life. Come, come, don't all just stand there ah. Mings, little you, and you, little girl, come over and eat with fifth lord. The Emperor Emeritus glared at Jiang Quain and then ignored his presence. His eyes had been attracted to the table full of delicious smelling food that was all familiar to him. In his previous life, Zihui Yong had also been a brilliant and outstanding military official of his country. He didn't have any other interests, 
other than eating good food. After he transmigrated over to this world, he had been on the battleground for several years in a row. Being able to eat enough to fill his belly was already considered quite good, so how could he be picky about the food? After he ascended the throne, he found that the imperial palace's chefs were all decent. Perhaps he still missed his previous life but he always felt like the food here didn't taste quite right. However, he and the current emperor were both men who didn't know how to cook. Thus, he was even more attached to finding the taste of his previous life in this world. Decades passed and the memory of those familiar foods of his previous life had slowly faded. He had originally believed that he would never be able to have a taste of his homeland again in this lifetime. However, he didn't expect that in this impoverished, tiny courtyard, he would finally be able to satisfy his long-standing desire. These are all just some home-cooked dishes so please don't dislike them because of that, fifth lord, please eat your fill. Yuxia Kang took a hold of a plate of century eggs with tofu and lightly placed the dish in front of the emperor emeritus. Zihui Yong's eyes lit up even more brightly and he smiled slyly like an old fox, little girl, you even know how to make century eggs and you claim that you can't make bean vermicelli, don't try to trick me. Fifth Lord's eyes are still sharp. Century eggs, daughter, our family's century eggs are ready to eat. Fang's eyes and had been quite busy on the docks and had almost forgotten about these eggs. He stared at the plate of delicate and delicious century eggs with tofu that was in front of the Emperor Emeritus. He almost couldn't control his desire to try some now. Xia Kao had finished serving all of the food to the table and was about to go to the kitchen to serve food to the Imperial bodyguards when the Emperor Emeritus stopped her. Little girl, you've been busy for a while. Come sit next to fifth lord and eat some. They all have working limbs, if they're hungry, they'll be able to find food to eat. The emperor emeritus had already ordered that only Fang Sizen, Yu Hai, and Yuxia Kao had the honor of accompanying him for the meal. Jiang Quain stood on the side and held a new pair of chopsticks. He picked up an eggplant fritter and was about to taste it. Stop. You don't need to test the food for poison here, go into the kitchen where Commanders Wang and the others are and eat the meal there. The Emperor Emeritus trusted the Yu family and having someone taste the food before he tried was not essential. He refused to permit another person at the table to eat his precious food. Jiang Quain perceptibly made a noise in assent. In his heart, the Yu family had risen ranks. There probably weren't many people who could make the Emperor Emeritus trust them so much. Right? Century eggs with tofu. It's been decades since I've last had these. I've almost forgotten what they taste like. Ah. The Emperor Emeritus carefully picked a piece of tofu stuffed with century eggs and opened his mouth wide. He shoved the whole piece into his mouth. The tender tofu with the savory flavor of the century eggs spread through his mouth. Being able to taste food that he hadn't had for years almost made Zhu Huiyong let out a couple tears in joy. Fang's eyes and watched the Emperor Emeritus earnestly. When he saw the obvious pleasure on the older man's face and some faint signs of moisture in his eyes. Anxiety rose in his heart, was there really something so delicious that would make the Emperor Emeritus cry? Chapter 153, Old Urchin A. Eh? How come all of you are just watching me eat? If you all don't start eating, I'm going to finish off this table R. Ah. The Emperor Emeritus took another piece of century egg with tofu and stuffed it into his mouth as he delicately enjoyed it. This was the first time in his life that Fang Zizen was sitting at the same table for a meal with the Emperor Emeritus. Sure enough, the Emperor Emeritus was an amiable and approachable person. In history, how many emperors had sat at the same table as their officials? Although he was a bit nervous, he couldn't resist the tempting lure of the delicacies and carefully picked up a cube of century egg in Dofu to eat. A special flavor combined with the exquisite light taste of the tofu slowly bloomed inside his mouth. It provoked his taste buds. He had eaten the food that Xia Kao made for over a month now but she surprised him with something new every time. Even if it was the exact same ingredient, she had the ability to make it into something completely different. He suspected that even the famous chef at Zanxiu restaurant would not be able to recreate the same flavors that she cooked. Xia Kao sniggered. Thanks to the mystic stone water, Fang Zizen immediately fell in love with the slippery texture and fresh, 
savory taste of the century eggs. Once he had finished reflecting on the taste in his mouth, he wanted to grab a second bite and discovered that the plate was completely empty. The Emperor Emeritus, on the other hand, had a longing expression on his face, as if he wished he could eat more. Daughter, the portion size of this century egg with tofu is really too small right? I only ate one piece and the plate is empty. This doesn't satisfy my craving. Didn't you make 20 to 30 century eggs? Slice a few more for us. Today fifth lord is here, so don't be petty. The expression on his face and words coming out of his mouth made it seem like Fang Zizen was advocating for the Emperor Emeritus, but, in actuality, he just wanted to eat more himself. Yuxia Kao glanced at the Emperor Emeritus and secretly sneered within her heart, I've never seen someone at your age eating this much alone. A whole plate of century eggs with tofu had been gobbled up by you, old man. As for Godfather, you're lucky that you got to try a piece Ah, My biological father hasn't even picked up his chopsticks. Despite her less than flattering thoughts, she still had a sweet smile on her face. Fifth Lord, there should be tomatoes in the capital, right? Try some of the stir-fried tomatoes with eggs that I made. How does it taste? The Emperor Emeritus obligingly went with her request and picked up a portion of eggs as he said. Tomato seeds were only recommended for growing last year. Not a lot of people are growing them in the capital, but you have already done so. You have a pretty good way of doing things are ah, good. Fifth Lord will taste how it is. Just as he finished talking, he placed the eggs into his mouth and chewed. His long beard moved up and down with his mouth movements. Xia Cow couldn't help but face him and stare at the long whiskers for a bit. Not bad, not bad. The colors are bright and appetizing. The taste is fresh and sweet, it's better than the food made by Palace's imperial chefs. Little girl, are you sure you weren't a chef in your previous life? This seemingly simple statement made by the Emperor Emeritus made Xiaokai extremely nervous. She glanced over at her somewhat reserved father and laughed hollowly, perhaps ah, who can remember their previous life after drinking Granny Meng's soup. However, Everyone tells me that I have a talent for cooking. Maybe I was truly a famous chef in my past life. Probably also one who specialized in the dishes that commoners eat. This child doesn't know how to be humble. Are there any famous chefs who are female? Yuhai glared at her in warning. Someone who was able to eat the food the imperial chefs made was absolutely not low in rank. His little daughter frequently liked to blabber thoughtlessly but she absolutely should not offend Fifth Lord. The Emperor Emeritus was in an exceedingly good mood and grabbed a chopstick full of chicken stewed with mushrooms. He ate it heartily and smiled. I don't know if there were any famous female chefs in history but I believe that our great Ming dynasty can have a famous female chef show up. As he talked, he even looked at Xia Kao for a bit. Yuxia Kao calmly ate the rice in her bowl. Since she transmigrated over here, she hadn't been able to eat plain white rice. When she heard what he said, she finally became more modest. Fifth Lord, you're overestimating my abilities. I only know how to make a few home-style dishes. You've probably gotten tired of eating fancy dishes with lots of meat and seafood. Now that you get to taste some home-style cooking, you think it's fresh and unique, that's all. If you had to eat this style of food every day, then you wouldn't think it's tasty anymore. Fang Zizen was gobbling up his food with head plastered to his bowl when he coolly interjected, I think my daughter's skills are just plain good. I've eaten the food you made for over a month and haven't gotten tired of it. My family's daughter could make even vegetables boiled in plain water taste good. Daughter, go slice up a few more century eggs ah. Yuxia Kao looked at her godfather, who had fattened up a few inches around his waistline somewhat helplessly. Luckily, Grandpa Zha would force him to practice martial arts every day. Otherwise, she was afraid that he would have become rotund fatty at this point. At the rate that he was gaining weight, she wasn't sure whether her godmother would still recognize him the next time he went back to the capital. She grinned as she looked at Fang Zizen and then spoke to the Emperor Emeritus. I also made some century eggs out of chicken eggs and they should be ready to eat. I'll slice up a few to let everyone try some. The uncle bodyguards over there, don't bother with them, they're fine eating anything, as long as they can eat until they're full. The Emperor Emeritus knew that Xia Kao didn't make a lot of century eggs in her first batch, 
so he obviously couldn't bear to let that bunch of brats eat his food, right? He was still planning on bringing some back to the capital with him. The imperial bodyguards were sitting at the table in the kitchen. On the table, other than the century eggs and tofu which had been switched for tofu mixed with shallots, the rest of the dishes were the same as the ones for the table outside. The imperial bodyguards had been on the road for the whole morning and had long felt their stomachs sticking to their backbones out of hunger. In front of a table full of tasty dishes, they gorged themselves without any inhibition. They usually had a good relationship with one another but, today, for the sake of a piece of twice cooked pork, they almost started fighting. When Xiaokao entered the kitchen, the imperial bodyguards had already completely finished the table full of food in record time. Every plate on the table was completely empty, even the sauce from the vegetables had been poured onto their rice and eaten. The commander of the guards felt his face flush with embarrassment when he saw Xiaokao enter the kitchen. He silently cursed the soldiers underneath his command for acting like a bunch of starving refugees. Weren't they going to be laughed at by this little girl, uncle bodyguards? Did you guys eat to your fill? If that wasn't enough, I can cook a few small dishes for you all? Xiaokao exclaimed in astonishment when she saw how much food the four men ate. They had unexpectedly eaten enough for eight people and cleared all of the plates. Perhaps those who practiced martial arts used more energy, so their capacity for food was larger. The four imperial bodyguards along with the court eunuch all became excited at the thought of eating more food. However, after rubbing their rotund, stuffed stomachs, they could only shake their heads in regret and tell her that they were full. The commander of the group couldn't look Xiaokao in the eye when he saw how shameless his soldiers were. Xiaokao retrieved a few mud-coated eggs from the corner, tapped off the mud shells, and peeled the century eggs. In her previous lifetime, at her hometown, century eggs made out of chicken eggs were also called bayandan. These few bayandan were all ready to be eaten. The egg white part of the eggs looked like jelly and were sparkling and translucent. The yolk part of the eggs resembled a ball of sugar. When cut open, liquid drops of oil flowed out and made the eggs look extremely appetizing. The courtyard wasn't very large, so the imperial bodyguards had naturally heard what the Emperor Emeritus had said previously. Were these the century eggs that the Emperor Emeritus had mentioned? What did they taste like? Everyone could tell that these were extremely delicious. Otherwise, why else would the Emperor Emeritus, who had tried every delicacy under the heavens, protect these eggs from them? The more restricted something was, the more the heart thirsted for it. Unfortunately, this was not a desire they could satisfy right now. The Imperial bodyguards stared at Xiaokao intently as she peeled and sliced the eggs. Their gaze made her feel a lot of pressure and she felt like her back was burning under their relentless stares. She accelerated her movements and also chopped up some garlic, cloves and green peppers. Vinegar and sesame oil were added to season the dish and then everything was sprinkled on top of the century eggs. She quickly carried the dish out. If she didn't leave soon, then she absolutely would have collapsed from being stared at by this pack of hungry wolves. This cold plate of seasoned bayanda naturally received unanimous, generous praise from everyone who tried it. Fortunately, the Emperor Emeritus had pretty much eaten his fill, so this allowed Fang Zai's and and Yuhai the opportunity to try some. After Yuhai tasted a slice, he lightly nodded his head, this is a dish that probably goes well with alcohol. That's right. Such a delicious dish. How come we don't have any alcohol with it? Commander Zhuang, where did I hide that bottle of Zenian when I left? Quickly take it out. The Emperor Emeritus yelled at the commander in exhilaration. The stony cold expression on the commander's face didn't change a whit as he calmly replied in an even tone of voice, before we left. The Emperor had inspected our luggage while you were unaware. That bottle of Imperial Zenian had been confiscated by him. When the Emperor Emeritus was young, he loved to drink alcohol. After ascending the throne, he felt that he had a lot of responsibility, so he very rarely drank until he was dead drunk. Once he abdicated, he immediately invited a bunch of old officials over and drank alcohol with them every day. The old internal injuries left behind from the war as well as his advancing age caused his stomach to bleed after drinking too much. He vomited blood everywhere and scared the group of old officials until they were pale from fright. Fortunately, 
It wasn't his time to go and after being treated by all of the imperial doctors in the palace, he was able to keep his life. Since then, the emperor strictly prohibited him from drinking alcohol. He not only sent people over to watch over him but also set down rules for guilt by association. Whoever accompanied the emperor emeritus in drinking alcohol or witnessed him drinking without reporting would also be sentenced to go down a rank. If they weren't an official, then they would have to be imprisoned for three months. The pitiful emperor emeritus with his alcohol-loving heart was no longer able to find any alcohol to drink. When he did get his hands on some, he couldn't find anyone to accompany him. It was truly a calamitous situation for him. The smile on the old man's face disappeared, and he snorted furiously a couple of times, don't drink then I won't drink. Without alcohol to accompany the meal, it doesn't feel right. Oh right? Little girl, have you any fermented grape wine or fruit wine of any sort? Yuxia Kao could sense the commander's anxiety and looked at him reassuringly to placate the man. She smiled, you also know that we had separated from the main family at the end of last year. Other than receiving this rundown old house, we didn't even get any furniture to go with it. How would we have any tools to ferment wine? That being said, even if I had the tools, how could I have made any without any of the ingredients? In the dead of winter, where would I find any grapes and fruit then to ferment wine for you? The Emperor Emeritus pursed his lips and replied irritably, Little you are, I really don't like that stepmother of yours. The rest I won't mention, but she had taken Zhao Bufan's 300 tls from selling that bear yet she didn't even give one tl to your family. Also, that younger brother of yours. From my standpoint, he's not suited to be a scholar. And he's living in town like a young lord, eating good food. All of it is funded by her. She's so biased that she doesn't know what's right and proper anymore. I really feel annoyed about this, very annoyed. How about I call her over and scare her a bit? A waterfall of cold sweat poured down Yehai's body. Why was this fifth lord meddling with his family's matters? In regards to Madame Zhang, he didn't feel any hate or rancor towards her, only a bit of resentment. After all, Madame Zhang had raised him and his older sister after his mother had passed away. He already understood Madame Zhang's personality, she was the perfect example of a tyrant at home but a coward outside. She was only a little brazen, that's all. Now that she was older, he was afraid that she wouldn't be able to tolerate being frightened. Yu Hai hurriedly stood up and bowed, Thank you fifth lord for your benevolence towards us. As the proverb says, the son cannot criticize his parents actions. After all, she's the wife that my father had legally married, and she also raised me and my older sister. Thus, chapter 154, Vermicelli, you, as a person all other qualities are good, but you are foolishly filial. If you never set your boundaries, then be prepared to be taken advantage of. Should you continue to go down this path, then I'm afraid that your wife and children will need to suffer more. Ah. The Emperor Emeritus shook his head out of disappointment. To him, Yu Hai was like a piece of iron that refused to strengthen into steel. Fang Zizen had long understood the complex relationships within the Yu family and looked at Yu Hai. He slightly frowned, if my goddaughter gets mistreated. Don't blame me for not warning you. When that moment comes, I will take my daughter to the capital to live comfortably and make sure that you will never be able to see her again. When you I heard this, the look on his face immediately changed. In regards to this fellow, who was constantly trying to steal his daughter, he already felt unhappy. For the past month or so, he felt like he was the stepfather in this relationship and Fang Zizen was the true father. Whenever Fang Zizen was around, he felt like he had to take a step back. However, General Fang truly treated his daughter well. Clothes, jewelry, and other expensive articles for daily use were all moved into his daughter's room as if they didn't cost any money. His daughter's east room had almost been stuffed to the brim. If it were not for Xiaokao making a fuss, Fang Zizen would have given her even more. Without someone to compare to, then there would be nothing showing his deficiencies. Now that there was a comparison, he, as the biological father, not only couldn't give his daughter everything she needed but she also had to constantly deal with the avaricious and greedy Madame Li and Madame Zhang too. Arg, as a father, he truly wasn't a qualified and good one R. Ah. However, with the pressure of filial piety above him, 
he didn't want to cause any trouble for his children. If he had a bad reputation for being disobedient to his parents, that would mean his children would be subject to the gossip of others as well as create a bad reputation for his youngest son, who was studying in town. This was truly like being between a rock and a hard place. Xiaka stepped next to her worried father's side and secretly pulled at his calloused and large hand. She comforted him, Father, don't worry, I won't abandon our family and live in luxury by myself in the capital. If I want to go, then our whole family needs to go together, Father. Trust me, I will definitely lead our family to live happy and prosperous lives together. We'll make those other people be envious. The rims of Yu Hai's eyes suddenly became red. Ah, he was so useless that he needed his barely nine-year-old daughter to comfort him. He likely grasped his daughter's small and chubby hand. Ever since they separated from the main family, not only did his youngest daughter gain some weight but also the rest of the family members. Compared to their original stick skinny figures they looked a lot healthier now. Ah, such a good daughter ah. Daughters are still more considerate and loving, no wonder everyone says that daughters are their parents warm, little winter jackets. Fang Zizen's heart felt sour as he watched the father and daughter pair interact with each other. Why did the heavens not have eyes? Such a good daughter should have been born in his family. If he had such a sweet daughter, he would absolutely pamper her, give her the very best and absolutely not allow anyone to bully her. After they finished eating lunch, the Emperor Emeritus left with his group of guards and the court eunuch to visit the Zhao family. Before he left, he said, Tonight, I'm coming over to eat braised pig head meat and duck blood vermicelli soup. That old fellow, Zhao Zimo, had fought with him several years in the past. Had the previous dynasty not had that imbecile on the throne. It wouldn't have been easy for him to seize the throne. Zhao Zimo's strategies and tactics were godly and he had long itched to exchange ideas with him. Yuxia Kao felt very helpless. Making bean vermicelli by hand was very complicated and difficult. This Emperor Emeritus was seriously too much, he never let a person relax for even a second. Because there had been outside visitors earlier, Madame Liu had stayed inside. She had just finished her meal when she came out and noticed the worried expression on her daughter's face. She asked out of worry, the vermicelli that Fifth Lord kept mentioning, is it difficult to get the ingredients for it? We already have all of the ingredients at home, but the process to make it is quite complicated. Yuxia Kao acted spoiled and held on to Madame Liu's arm as she softly inhaled her mother's warm smell. Madame Liu stroked her daughter's lustrous and black hair. Her younger daughter's body was becoming healthier every day, and she hadn't even gotten a cold since they split from the family. Her previously dry, messy, and yellowing hair had also become glossy and dark after receiving more nutrition. As for her face, it used to be wan and sallow but now there was plump flesh to be pinched. Madame Liu felt deep satisfaction within her heart. If she had known earlier that her children would all become like this, she would have fought harder for them despite the risk of being labeled unfilial. She rubbed at her younger daughter's rosy and tender face and softly said, It doesn't matter, mother will help you. And there's also us. Yu Hang and Xiolian, who had just finished cleaning and putting away the plates and chopsticks, came in and grinned at the rare sight of their younger sister acting spoiled. It was only in times like this that their younger sister actually seemed like a nine-year-old child. Many hands make light work. With her whole family there, Yuxia Kao felt energy surge her body. She waved a fist in the air in excitement and loudly exclaimed, OK, let's work together then. Xiolian, scrub the large pot on the stove until it's completely clean, then boil a whole pot full of water in it. Older brother, go to the cellar and bring up a bag of sweet potato powder. Mother, help me wash the large base and clean then prepare a bolt of gauze for me. Father, can you drill some evenly spaced holes in the bottom of this wooden basin? Yuxia Kao ordered everyone around in succession. Although they were all busy, everyone felt happiness bloom within their hearts. Having the whole family work together towards one goal. It really felt amazing. Xia Kao instructed her brother to pour the sweet potato powder into the large basin and added water until it became viscous and sticky. After that, she used the gauze cloth to filter out any impurities. By the time she finished with that, the water on the stove had started boiling. 
they poured the hot water into another pot and dumped the filtered sweet potato powder into it. A rolling pin that was as thick as a person's wrist was used to agitate the contents. Naturally, this job fell to you high, who had already finished drilling holes into the small wooden basin. As he stirred, more filtered sweet potato powder was added. The pot was then put on the stove at a low heat and they had to use a lot of force to knead the sweet potato mixture. Kneading was exhausting work and required a lot of strength and endurance. Yuhai naturally wouldn't let his wife and children do this type of work, so he followed his younger daughter's instructions and kneaded with a lot of effort. After the kneading was done, Xiaokao had her mother stand next to the stove. Then, she grabbed the wooden basin with its newly drilled holes and poured the kneaded sweet potato powder into it. Madame Liu stood on a stool and pounded the wooden basin with a lot of force. The sweet potato mixture slowly went through the holes. Due to gravity, the strands of sweet potato dough became long and slender. When they fell into the boiling water, they immediately became cooked. Xeolian then took a long wooden dowel and stirred the pot full of vermicelli incessantly. At exactly the right time. Xiaokao used a sieve in her hand to fish out the cooked vermicelli. The scalding hot vermicelli was then put into a large vat full of cold water. The quality of the cold water directly influenced the taste of the vermicelli. Thus, the vat was not only filled with spring water from the mountains but also had a few drops of mystic stone water mixed in. Once the vermicelli cooled down, Yu Hang carefully fished it all up. At this time, the vermicelli was still a bit sticky and required Yu Hang to separate each strand by hand. This work was quite laborious and tiring, because pounding the sweet potato dough through the holes also required a lot of endurance. Before long, Madame Liu's arms became very sore and she couldn't bring them up again. Yu Hai felt bad for his wife and hastily took over the task for her. Madame Liu couldn't stay idle. So she went to take the cooled vermicelli and hang them from bamboo poles and lay them flat on wooden planks to dry. They couldn't let the vermicelli dry in the sun as that would ruin the final product. In addition, while they were drying in the air, they also needed to sprinkle water on top to prevent them from sticking to each other. Thus, not only did they have to sprinkle water on top but also continuously separate the strands by hand. After repeating this process over several times, they could finally take the wooden planks away and set up the bamboo poles. The vermicelli could then hang from the poles and air dry. During the drying process, it required someone to flip the vermicelli over until they were completely dry. With the whole family working on this, they were busy for a whole afternoon to make 20 or so catties of sweet potato vermicelli. The reason why Xiaokao knew how to vermicelli was because in her previous life, there was a woman who married into her village who was from a family that knew how to make sweet potato vermicelli. For a time, the woman had made handmade vermicelli to sell in town. Xiaokao, as Lin Xiaon in her previous life, had helped that woman make them, and thus that was how she became so familiar with the whole process. Although this was the first time she had independently completed the process. The vermicelli all turned out okay. However, the finished product wasn't uniform in thickness. Making vermicelli was a process that required skill and practice. The more she made them, the better they would turn out. Nevertheless, the work required to make vermicelli was quite tiring and exhausting, especially Yu Hai's task. He had to hold up a rather heavy wooden basin and constantly pound it to let the sweet potato mixture come out. After all that work, his arms didn't feel like his own anymore. They were so sore that he couldn't raise them up again. Xiaokao used the multicolored stone to massage his arms for a long time, and only then did they recover a bit. As the night slowly crept over the sky, the Emperor Emeritus finally came back with Zhao Zimo's entire family. He walked in, immensely pleased. From the look of the expression on his face, it was obvious that his discussion that afternoon had been very fruitful. Many strategies and tactics of war had been lost throughout the years as they were transferred through generations. With those of family's arts explained to him, a lot of things he used to have trouble understanding suddenly became clear to him. Although it had been a long time since they had last been on the battlefield, the Emperor Emeritus and Zhao Zimo were soldiers to their bones. While the two were discussing strategies with each other, they had some people retrieve some sand from the beaches to make a sandbox. Using the sandbox, 
The two dueled each other for an entire afternoon and didn't permit others to bother them. Both won and lost, and both gained a new understanding and enlightenment of the art of war. The two old men enjoyed themselves immensely. Once they finished, the Emperor Emeritus especially invited Zhao Zimo and his family to Yuxia Cow's home to try some delicacies. He even mysteriously hinted to Zhao Zimo, today. That little girl Xiaokao has created a whole new dish. I guarantee that you've never eaten it before. If you don't go, you'll never be able to eat it again when you return to the capital. It was easy for him to flap his lips and say that, as just a single sentence of his had caused the whole new family to be busy for an entire afternoon. He had already started boasting, but wasn't even a bit afraid that Xiaokao wouldn't be able to figure it out. Zhao Han sneered on the side and inwardly thought. With my family's good relationship with Xiaokao's family, how could I possibly not be able to eat it? Every time she makes something delicious, she always sends some to us. However, then he thought, today, grandfather received a position from court. Within a few days, he'll need to go to the capital and claim his post. Father has also been given a general of the fourth rank position and it's rumored that the tribes in the northwest have not been very peaceful lately. Grandfather is getting old, so if father wants to continue the Zhao's family traditions, then he absolutely cannot avoid going to the battlefield. At his age, his father had already fought on the battlefield with his grandfather. Zhao Han was certain that he would also be going to the border to gain experience. Every man had a dream that he wanted to pursue in his heart. As someone who had learned martial arts at a young age, he was no exception. One of his long-time dreams was to go on the battlefield to kill the enemies of his country, so he should be happy right now. However, when the thought of not being able to try Xiaokao's foods for a long time in the future, as well as not being able to see her hit him Zhao Han immediately became gloomy. Ha ha, Zhao family youngster, how come you suddenly look so sad? Don't worry, today, you'll all enjoy the reflected glory from me, fifth lord. All of us can be the first ones to try a new delicacy. Come, come, I can't wait anymore. The Emperor Emeritus took the lead and swiftly walked down the mountain road. He wasn't even afraid that he might twist his ankle. Chapter 155, Leaving Reluctantly In the afternoon, Xiaokao had gone over to Madame Mao's to buy two ducks. She let the duck blood flow into a small basin and used the duck offal to braise along with the pig intestines. At this moment, the braised food had just finished cooking and the whole courtyard was enveloped in its tantalizing smell. As the Emperor Emeritus entered the residence, he forcefully breathed in the air and an intoxicated expression appeared on his face. He muttered to himself, this is the exact smell. The only braised pig head meat that tastes authentic is the one that this little girl makes. When he saw the vermicelli drying in the courtyard, he guffawed heartily, I knew that the little lass would be able to make it happen. Isn't that right? Girl, little girl, add a pork stewed with vermicelli to the table. Yuxia Cow came out of the kitchen to see the fuss and greeted both the Zhao family members and the Emperor Emeritus. She then rolled her eyes at the person who had added another request, Fifth Lord, if you can conjure up some pork right now, then I will make you some pork stewed with vermicelli. Look at you. You're claiming you're poor in front of this lord. Last time I gave you quite a bit of money for that recipe. Don't tell me you can't afford to eat pork then. Hey, you're becoming more and more gutsy nowadays, little girl. Ah, you even dare to roll your eyes at this lord, eh? Although the Emperor Emeritus wasn't young anymore, his eyes and ears were still quite sharp. He naturally didn't miss Xiaoka rolling her eyes at him. By now. Yuxiakao already had a good idea of what the Emperor Emeritus's personality was like. If he truly wanted to punish her for her transgressions, then she already would have been punished a billion times by now. She daringly made a funny face at the Emperor Emeritus and grinned provokingly. How so? You're old, so you must have been seeing things. The duck blood and vermicelli soup will soon be done, Fifth Lord. Please sit down for now. Fang Zizen was stunned silly by his adopted daughter's reckless conduct. She was being impudent to the highest authority in the land, the Emperor Emeritus, who was known for being brutal and callous when needed. In order to preserve his adopted daughter's life, he hurriedly pleaded for leniency, Fifth Lord, 
This little girl doesn't know the consequences of her actions, she's still a child, please don't lower yourself to her level. The Emperor Emeritus imitated Xiaokao's conduct and rolled his eyes at Fang Sizen. Do you really need to butt in? For the sake of the duck blood and vermicelli soup, I'll forgive you this time, cut a portion of the braised pig head meat and pig ears for now and mix in some garlic paste too. Yuxia Cow was so busy in the kitchen that she couldn't do much else, so Xiolian took out the braised pig head, pig ear strips with chili oil, pig intestines with scallions, spicy and numbing pig tripe, stir-fried pig liver, and five spiced spicy duck to the guests. Every dish was piled high and there was even enough for the imperial guards to eat too. As for the court eunuch who brought the imperial decree, Jiang Wayne. He had been ordered back to the capital by the Emperor Emeritus after lunch. Originally, the amount of food that was prepared was quite abundant. However, both the Emperor Emeritus and Fang Zizan had ultra-sized stomachs. In addition, there were four people from the Zhao family the two, so it was a bit lacking. The two burners on the kitchen stove were both on high heat. One of them was stewing some duck soup and the other one was being used by Yuxiakao, who was brandishing a spatula to sauté a few vegetable dishes. Come in, come in, come in. Don't be polite. Try some of the fruits of the little Asksia cow's labor. The Emperor Emeritus had taken charge of this meal as he sat on a simple and crude wooden stool. His eyes stared at the table full of food. And he started wielding his chopsticks without regard for the others. The Yu family's new dining table wasn't very big, so it was a bit crowded from seating six large brawny men. With the imposing Emperor Emeritus at the table, the rest of the people couldn't fully express themselves. Luckily, the Emperor Emeritus didn't have many heirs and the way he yet increased other people's appetites. When he was pleased from eating the food, he would even grab a chopstick bite of the dish for General Zhao Zimo to share. General Zhao felt quite overwhelmed by his favor. With his mouth full of delectable pig head meat, crispy pig ears, and fatty intestines, the Emperor Emeritus felt like he had finally tasted the flavor he had been craving for. He really wanted to settle down at Dongshan village as a long-time resident. When he had eaten almost to his fill, the Emperor Emeritus looked at the vermicelli drying in the courtyard. He remarked with emotion in his voice, I really miss the taste of pork stewed with vermicelli. Ah, it's been on my mind for decades and I'm not sure if I'll ever be able to taste it again in this lifetime. General Zhao Zimo looked at the former chief of the volunteer army, who had once been vigorous and full of energy. Now, the man's hair had turned completely white and there were a lot of wrinkles on his face. His back also wasn't as straight and brawny as before. A sorrowful feeling settled in his heart and the thought of a hero who is past his prime flickered through his mind. He quietly asked. Is it difficult to make pork stewed with vermicelli? I know what pork is, but I've never heard of vermicelli. This official is ignorant and inexperienced, so this is the first time I've heard of that. Look! The Emperor Emeritus faced the bamboo poles that held the drying strips and pouted, that is vermicelli. I didn't expect that by just mentioning it, the little girl really figured out how to make them. Although I can tell that the thickness of the noodles are not very even, the taste should still be the same. Now that everything else is prepared, we only lack the pork ah. If we had some fatty streaky pork, that would be even better. Ah, Dongshan village is still a bit too desolate, it doesn't even have a place to buy meat from. Fang Zizan was also quite interested in the pork stewed with vermicelli that the Emperor Emeritus kept mentioning. He suddenly had an idea and smiled. Fifth Lord, although there isn't a place to buy meat from in Dongshan village, there are still people who raise pigs here ah. If you really want to eat some, we could buy a big, fat pig and then slaughter it. Mings. Zhao Zimo wasn't quite sure what to do with his occasionally unreliable apprentice. He really didn't know how this confused man managed to survive decades during the chaos of the start of the dynasty. The man didn't know how to keep his mouth shut and use his brain. Fang's eyes and lowered his head sadly like a child who had said something wrong. He stealthily glanced at his master and then quickly looked down again. Zhao Zimo glared at him fiercely. What kind of rotten idea did this dumb schmuck come up with? The current emperor promoted being frugal and economical and had a great reputation among the commoners. If they especially slaughtered a pig right now and the word came out, 
that would damage the imperial family's reputation. This stupid rascal, did he want to become a conniving favored official? Ah, grandfather, we have a piece of pork cooling in the well in our back courtyard. However, it's not fatty, streaky pork and is a more balanced piece of leg meat. Zhao Han's mother usually didn't leave the house often, so most of the family's goods were purchased by Zhao Han or his father. Thus, Zhao Han usually had a good idea of what ingredients they had at home. The Emperor Emeritus slapped his hand down and laughed heartily, leg meat is also okay. As long as it's pork, it's fine. Youngster Han, go get the pork now. Today, I'll finally be able to eat some pork stewed with vermicelli. Ah, originally I was planning on staying an extra half day tomorrow in order to not leave with regrets. In the other room, the leader of the Imperial Guards heard the Emperor Emeritus's remark as he ate his meal. He felt his heart tremble. Before they left, the Emperor had given an order he could not disobey on the pain of death. They had to bring the Emperor Emeritus safely back to the Imperial Palace within five days. A one-way trip to Dongshan village already took two days, and they had already spent an entire day in the village today. Originally, the plan was to go back to the prefectural city tomorrow, rest half a day, and then go to the capital the day after. If they delayed an additional day, then who knew if the Emperor Emeritus would have another brilliant idea on the way home and delay them further. Should the Emperor Emeritus be prompted by a sudden impulse to do something else, then his mission to bring him back within five days would be impossible to complete. Hearing what the Emperor Emeritus just said made him want to cry tears of despair. Fortunately, there's our family had some pork. He had never been so ecstatic and happy over a piece of pork. That evening, the Emperor Emeritus had finally satisfied his long-standing craving for good food. Not only did he get to taste duck blood and vermicelli soup, but he also got to eat some authentic pork stewed with vermicelli. Although he wished he had some wine to accompany him, he was still extremely content. At night, the Emperor Emeritus stayed over at the Zhao family's residence. The Zhao family trembled with fear as they cautiously made preparations for the night. They were afraid that even the wind blowing over the grass might alarm the Emperor Emeritus. The Imperial bodyguards were even more miserable. Because there weren't enough rooms available, they had to spend the night in the middle of the cold courtyard with blankets wrapped around their bodies to keep warm in the chilly spring night. Luckily, the night passed without any problems, and the Zhao family and bodyguards were able to sigh in relief the next day. The next day, before he left, the Emperor Emeritus especially went to the Yu family, and bought all of the remaining vermicelli and the braised food they were planning to sell at the docks that morning. Once he got back to the capital, he certainly wouldn't have another chance to eat such authentic tasting braised food. Ash, should he build a mansion residence on the West Mountain? When he returned, he planned on asking Chief Steward Liu if his budget had enough money for this. If not, Maybe he should borrow some money from his numerous sons and grandsons to get this done. Right at this moment, within the capital, the imperial and royal princes all sneezed a few times by chance. A cold chill ran through their bodies. This is a sign of bad luck coming their way. Ah, the little royal prince, Zhejun Yang, who was far away drifting somewhere on the ocean, also let out a large sneeze. He rubbed his nose a couple of times and looked back towards the motherland. He thought, it must be mother who's thinking of me. I've already been out at sea for almost half a year. It's quite boring and dull being out here in the distant seas. Luckily, this group of ships has already been improved. Not only are they much more sturdy, but they are also a lot faster than before. He was convinced, that before long, he would be able to smoothly head back home. If he was lucky, he could even accompany his father and mother to the Dragon Boat Festival. When he was by their side he never thought of it. But when he left, he really couldn't help but worry about them. Zhejun Yang was looking forward to the day he would get back. After they saw off the esteemed honorable guest, the Emperor Emeritus, Yuxia Kao didn't get to rest for a few days before it was time to say farewell to the Zhao family. In order to send them off properly, Yuxia Kao prepared a grand table full of delectable delicacies. She even ordered some roasted chicken and osmanth stuck from Zhengxiu restaurant and also got a jar of good wine from them. That day was coincidentally the day that little Shita had his day off. The little boy sat at the table and looked at Zhao Han pitifully. He didn't want the older youth to leave, so he spoke with a voice choked with emotion. Brother Han, 
can you not leave, I will miss you a lot, before they had split from the main branch, he had lived a life where he starved day in and out, Zhao Han, who knew how to hunt, had become a ray of sunlight for him during those dark times, brother Han had taken him and second sister deep into the forest to set traps, roast game in the valley, and catch fish in the creek to stew into soup although his life now was much more pleasant and comfortable compared to before, those memories had become some of the best ones he could remember. When they split from the family, brother Han had also delivered some game to them from time to time in the beginning. It was his help that enabled them to survive that dangerous period of time. Later on, second sister used her talents and skills to send their family into prosperous times. However, within his heart, brother Han was still a tall and lofty figure for him. The ensemble of brother Han and second sister had become a heavenly perfect match. If only brother Han didn't have to leave, wouldn't that be great? Zhao Han rubbed the little fellow's head. After studying in town for a few months, the little guy not only fleshed out but also grew quite a bit in height. In addition, he was also dressed in the robes of scholar, so it really made him seem like a promising young youth. At this moment, Zhao Han's heart was also filled with regrets. Dongshan village was the place where he was born and grew up in. Although life here was poor and honest, it was a peaceful life. This place held all of the sweet memories of his youth, and this place also held the people who he cared and worried about. 